Jim Carr is a former professor of marketing, but he has decades worth of real world experience in private business. For 10 years, he's had a regular column in the weekly newspaper, Arkansas Business. He's compiled 30 solid columns from that endeavor into a new book, 30 Doses of Marketing Success, a month's worth of tips from a marketing doctor. Some proceeds for the book benefit Arkansas Children's Hospital. I caught up with Jim Carr earlier to talk about the book, its benefits, and its benefactors. All right, Jim, let's talk about this book. Um, Tell me who is it geared towards and what should that group or those groups take away from it besides, say, wisdom, experience, and untold fortunes? Well, I hope that there's some wisdom and experience and produce a lot of untold fortunes uh, from it. My audience has been, over the years, business leaders, managers, everyone who has some, and, and this is a pretty broad sweep, but marketing is pretty broad sweep because it's, it's everything that has to do with getting, serving, and keeping customers profitably. It's, a, to me, the fundamental business discipline. So anyone who's involved in companies and even for not-for-profit organizations that are trying to market to their constituencies and hopefully offer uh, both in perspective and sometimes some tactics, things that they can use better in their work. All right, readers should not be intimidated by this book. It's a comfortable read. It's very practical. It's not heavy on theory or hard to imagine concepts. I have selected a few chapters for us to discuss, beginning with uh, the chapter that's titled, Is Marketing Art or Science? Which is it? It's both. And uh, I was impressed, and, and the basis of that particular article was a study that had been done a few years ago. Uh, and some pointy heads uh, had, had put out, a, it was a forecasting task. Essentially, they'd taken some real-world um, returns from a retail promotion, and they were trying to figure out, what if we took a group of really experienced marketing uh, executives, managers who had been doing this for a while, and put their forecasting skills to the test against basically a computer model and the analytics that had been put together. So they ran that through, and a couple of things that to me were very profound uh, came out of it. The first is that the two groups, the kind of people versus machine, if you will, or people versus data, uh, were almost equal in terms of how accurately they forecast the success of that promotion. Uh, The other thing that came out was if you combined the two, the um, the kind of intuitive uh, with the data, you got a better result and a more accurate forecast. And and Roby, the combination that worked the best was 50-50. Basically, half of managers' intuition and experience and half of of data that had been coming back from the marketplace. So uh, it's a tie, Roby. Marketing is art and science. All right. Another chapter is making social media work, something we examine very regularly in our show and and try to make some good use of it, too. This is an area where some people and businesses have adopted early and seen some great success. Others are kind of guarded to enter What's the key to jumping off the plank in social media? I think, um, and, and when I wrote uh, that particular article, I was drawing from uh, an expert, uh, one of the top bloggers. Uh, I know you, you've talked to a lot of social media experts and bloggers. Um, and I was getting uh, Matt Collier's perspective on all this as well. And he was very big on something that is what I find maybe the fundamental challenge in effective marketing, which is keeping a focus on your customer, or in this case, your audience in social media. Um, I think a number of organizations have are looking at social media as one more way that I can push stuff, that I can distribute a, a one-way message. But the ones who really get this create a community and serve that community and then leverage it in some way. And they can leverage it to sell stuff or raise money or generate more conversation or do research or all of the above. So I think um, if you approach it from that right mindset, don't get so dazzled by the tools, although the tools are terrific, but if you can keep that discipline about the focus on that audience, how is it that I can serve them or tell them something or help them share in some way that serves that community online, you'll be really successful. All right, Jim, my toughest question of the day for you is also the title of one of the chapters. Can you tell me why do Snuggies sell? (laughs) <laughs> you know, this was one I wrote a couple of years ago, and uh, uh, my wife, uh, Allison, and I have young kids, so we wind up 
watching a lot of uh, late night stuff as we're trying to clean the house and we kept seeing these Snuggies ads and I wondered how does this thing which is so aesthetically challenging at least to me seem to be doing so well uh, and, and Snuggies typically what happens is uh, if you produce stuff like this you have a new product they, they go on TV they try to generate enough interest to get a big retailer to to pick it up and carry it and then they can start making money well the Snuggies people were already making money without ever getting into retail and um, they were backlogged a couple of months on orders when I when I had a chance to speak to them I think what made um, Snuggies sell uh, a couple of years ago and now are uh, very practical kind of perfect for the times and they also had that message um, that I thought was was well suited for this product. And they weren't trying to be that stylish. It wasn't terribly expensive, and it wasn't about putting this kind of modified monk outfit on. It was saving money on energy costs, about being more comfortable in your home, which uh, has a very practical and immediate benefit for people. So they kept some of those very simple parts about the product and the message and the customer focus in mind. I would uh, I would also be interested someday in you explaining to me why Snooky sells too, but I digress. <laughs> uh, that's beyond my understanding, Roby. <laughs> yeah. I will say that uh, from the Snuggies uh, article that um, for my birthday, uh, the, the birthday that was immediately after that, my brother sent me a particularly um, ugly Snuggie uh, for for, uh, for my gift. So it has its downside writing about these things too. All right, last question. A portion of the proceeds for this book benefits Arkansas Children's Hospital. Tell me about the tie-in. Well, as a, a parent of uh, three young boys, we certainly have had more than our fair share of opportunities for uh, ACH to serve our, our family. Uh, we've been in there a lot, but there was a really interesting story that uh, was relevant to us. Um, a few years ago, my wife was watching, it was one of the uh, national uh, cable networks, I, I think Discovery, and they were doing a series that came out of the Vascular Anomalies Center of Excellence at Children's Hospital. And we saw there uh, the answer to something that had, had been a real conundrum for, um, for our niece, is a, a particular condition that she'd been struggling with. It had been misdiagnosed and under understood uh, they were out of state, they were in Florida at the time, and, and my wife saw this and thinks, hey, that's, that's what she has. And we were able to, to bring the parties together. Um, our, our niece has been treated and continues to be treated there. It's very manageable. We've had a great result. And it's one of those instances, Roby, where you have truly world-class expertise in Arkansas serving the rest of the world, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, that in some small way I can and bring a little more awareness to the Vascular Anomaly Center of Excellence and to ACH overall. So they get a, a small piece from uh, a piece from this book, uh, plan some other book projects coming up, and as I continue to do speaking and the like, uh, they can have a, a happily have a portion of those proceeds as well.